My beautiful friends, welcome to the table. It's wonderful to have you here and I'm excited to be here as well. I'm going to be using a new deck today. It's always um, helpful for me every once in a while to um, connect in with, with different images um, and, and, and different energies. Um, it does help to flow the information. So um, I will be using a freestyle reading today. I'll be looking into your energy and I'll be looking into the situation around you and we will be digging deeper into the energies that really pull at us or pull at me. So let's go ahead and get started, my friends. Let's look at your um, let's look at your energy first, Taurus, and then we'll go into the situation that's around you. Uh, we do have the Eight of Swords here with the Nine of Pentacles and the Three of Swords. So there's something here that you're working through, Taurus. Um, we do have you in a very independent energy. Um, it's a it's an energy where you under, are understanding your own strength. Uh, you're really really understanding what independence can do for you. Um, what money can do for you, what the resources, what resources are around you and how you connect in with those resources. Um, I think you're, you're really beginning to, the, the image that I have in my head uh, um, is your arm is, is really down by your side here. And, and you're, there, there's like a slow motion movie picture that's where your arm is raising up and you're, touching that coin you're touching that pinnacle you're looking at it you're pondering over it and you're gaining a new connection to it within the mind within the heart system um, you're you're gaining a new connection to it that's tangible that's something that is is what you're you're feeling like it's not out of the woods it's not on cloud nine it's not within um a, a fantasy it's something that you can tangibly see yourself or you can visually see yourself connecting in with taurus so it's like um again i've seen this um connect the dots when we were children um well it where i live anyway in the u.s um, we had when we were really young we had coloring books and before we could color the pictures we would have to connect the dots it would be a blank piece of paper with just dots on it and you would connect the dots in a way that that would form a picture and then once you had the picture you could color it um, that's what i'm being shown now it's like you're connecting the dots in this bigger picture of what you're considering to be your your own empowerment journey your own connection in with what is going to bring you sustenance what is going to bring you resources and self-reliance as you move into the future um, you are uh, in a situation here with the eight of swords and the three of swords um, it, you are currently feeling somewhat trapped Taurus in in your situation um, part of this is a situation that has been heartbreaking for you it could have been uh, anxiety inducing um, stress inducing it could have really broken your heart open or what came of it broke your heart open the consequences of it the effects of it really have caused pain and anxiety within you and heartbreak within you um, and, and there and, and there also could have been some kind of um result that it's had on the way that you're thinking on the way that you are perceiving the world around you so you you could be coming out of something that's been quite traumatic for you taurus where it could have been inf infected the way that damn word infected it is just in our vocabulary now isn't it taurus it could have really influenced the way you thought about the world around you and the way you thought about yourself um, that maybe you didn't realize how powerful you were or how beautiful you were or how much of an impact you can make on the world around you and and this can happen sometimes when we're in situations with other people that are unhealthy um, with with certain group mindsets that really keep us thinking in a minimal way there is here um, an empowerment that's going on within you and I think for some of you, you're just in the beginning phases of, a, of you, uh, of this situation. And for others of you, you are now kind of connecting in with that coin. And remember, coin doesn't always talk about money. Um, it talks about, um, how we live in the real world, in the, in the, on the land and on the ground and amongst the trees and amongst the people and amongst the traffic and amongst the, animals that we are that are here in what we see and feel so this is coming out of some sort of it, it's like a it's a grounding energy where you're kind of coming back from something and saying okay this is exactly where i'm at i see where i'm at i see the situation that i'm in i see how i've 
been damaged in this journey or how I have been affected by this journey. And I am starting to pull myself up out of this. I'm realizing the, the value of the resources that I have around me, perhaps even the people who can help me, the people who can connect me in with resources, um, the power of the coin, the power of money, and what it can do as far as bringing us into a more a free place in our life, and then the enjoyments that can be at hand when we have, um, w- when we really start to merge ourselves with the tools and the resources and um, the finances that, that are available to us in our journey. So, I, um, and I and I know this is a general reading, and it will um, really resonate with everyone. Those of you that are still here, that are still listening to this in a different way, um, because we live all around the world now and we have uh, ability to connect with people all around the world. And, um, we, we're sensing a new, um, a new tangibility with oneness of humanity. And so I'm, I'm realizing as I'm saying this, that I am coming at this from a certain perspective. Um, but I know that there are people that live around the world who have different, who have a different set of circumstances and uh, maybe are in a different culture and have different, um, challenges in their lives. But somehow this energy is going to resonate if you're still here and if you're from a different culture, um, Um, And and please don't assume that since I'm in the U.S. that I come from a certain kind of culture because I don't. I come from a very different kind of culture. My hands are white, but I come from a culture that is unlike most of America. So we, we have to start to realize as people that we are all different and we are all the same um, in, in so many different kinds of ways, Taurus. So um, I'm not sure why that's coming out, but it did. And so um, it, it is beautiful, that energy that I'm in right now. It, it's The energy that you're in, Taurus, is, is an empowering energy. It is moving into a very abundant energy, a very empress-like energy. And here I see the Queen of Swords, you know, sitting here. So um, well done, Taurus. I mean, I, I really feel like there's a group of you here that are really coming out um, of some sort of situation that w- has been quite difficult for you. And, and I see this path that's starting to be illuminated in front of you. And it really is a freedom path. It really is a victory path that you're on, um, that you're stepping into, Taurus. So it's beautiful to feel this kind of energy here. Um, and that's a hero's journey. You know, I mean, when we talk about the, the greatest stories of humanity and the legends that have been handed down, there's usually a kind of energy, energy around this. So go ahead, Taurus, and really connect in with your superpower because you're in some sort of a, of some sort of a hero journey here. I feel this energy. It's beautiful. All right. Let's go ahead and look at the situation that's around you. So I haven't seen these either, most of them, although I did see the, the Queen of Swords. All right, I see the Six of Wands. I mean, that's that's the energy that and the Two of Cups. The Six the Six of Cups. The Eight of Cups and the Queen of Swords. Eight of Cups is in reverse now. Now this Eight of Cups came in in a lopsided. It didn't come in totally in reverse, um, but it did come in sort of more in reverse than it did um, in the upright. So th- there's something changing here with this eight of cups energy. Um, so I have the six of wands. I have the two of cups, the six of cups, the eight of cups in reverse and the queen of swords. All right. Give me a moment for me to transition into your, the situation that's around you. Well, I mean, there's something new happening here with the six of wands. Um, there's a situation here where, um, there is a new, there, there's something new that you're stepping into. Uh, there is some kind of a partnership here with the two of cups. You can't really deny that there's a, there's some sort of a handshake, right? Or there's a holding of hands, um, or there's a high five, whatever this, whatever this, um, partnership is, it does have to do with something very much in your reality, right? Something that someone that you're talking to, someone that you're working with, um, something, some, someone that you're moving forward in an experience with, because the six of wands is all about moving forward, embracing the situation in front of you. Um, and, and there is, this is not a secret energy. Okay. Taurus, it's not a secret of energy. It's something that is alive. It's something that's being seen. It's something that's inspiring people, bringing people to their feet. 
turning heads. Taurus, it, it's something that you're doing that takes a lot of strength. The Six of Wands is not a weak energy. It's a very powerful energy, Taurus. It's an energy that helps you to stand up, raise your hand, step up, move forward, do something different, do something new. And it's not because you think that there's a reward. It's because you're inspired. It's because you're dedicated. It's because you feel so passionately for it that there's no other option but to do this. And yes, there is usually a reward with the Six of Wands, but the reward is not really what's on your mind. The reward is not really why you're doing it. It's the act of doing it and it's the reason for doing it that sends you forward into whatever this is. And the reward is something that is secondary or something that is long down the list, right? So there's something here that you're doing, whether it's in a new, whether it's an experience in a new relationship with a heart to heart connection, whether it's something that you're doing with a community member or with a family member or at work that you just feel so connected by that both of you feel so deeply about this, that you're willing to put yourselves on the line. You're willing to put your heart on the line. You're willing to step forward in a new way and say, you know, if I don't do this, I'm going to regret it forever. That's a two of cups energy. It's the heart taking action next to the passion. So it's, it's quite effective. And then you have the six of cups. You know, I, I kind of have been in this energy, haven't I, with the two of cups and the six of cups. It's probably something that you've had something tangible, a tangible connection to it since you have been small. For many years, you've probably had some kind of connection or some kind of dream or some kind of um, knowing about whatever it is that you're doing. Remember, the Six of Cups is something that's that goes deep within the self. It's something that's in the roots of who you are, in the DNA of who you are. It's nostalgic. It's family. It's legacy. It's your people, right? It's your people. It's why the most profound feats of humanity are carried forward, is the Six of Cups energy and the Six of Wands energy. These two energies, and along with this Two of Cups, can move mountains. I know I'm being dramatic, Taurus, but these energies here feel very deep, heart-centered, passionate, dramatic as well, like very dramatic. It's, it's passion mixed with love. That's what it is. And when we mix passion with love, no matter if it's for another person, for our family, for our people, for our country, this is life-changing. This is world-changing in one way or another. We do have the Eight of Cups next to the Queen of Swords. Okay, this is a little bit of a different energy now, so let me get into this energy. It just feels like, Taurus, that something that you have been working to remove yourself from or disconnect from or walk away from, it seems like that's kind of falling away now. That what you were concerned about in the past, what you were working on in the past, what you were connected to in the past, that boundary that you put up around that, as you moved away from it, that's all kind of falling away. So the boundaries that you had um, just before this happened or or around the time that this happened, th there's an ease now to that boundary because sometimes when we walk away from something that we've really put a lot of time and effort into, we can sometimes connect into that again when we don't want to. Uh, that energy itself can connect back into us again when we don't want it to. So sometimes we go through a period, and usually we go through a period, Taurus, of, of disconnection, 
disconnecting from something that we put our love and our time into for a long time in the past, disconnecting from that can take, it's a process. It's a process. It's not something that we can just flip a switch on. And I feel like when this starts happening for you here, Taurus, um, that, that, that old situation, it, it has, it's like you're releasing it. You're releasing it so that when it pings you, it's hard for it to even ping you. It's hard for it to sting you because you're not feeling it anymore. You're not connecting with it anymore. It doesn't have any power over you anymore. It's like you've taken the power back in a way. And the Queen of Swords is here as well. So there could be some sort of air sign um, or a person around you that has a very um, air quality, uh, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. This could also be your energy um, being very expressive. Now, now the energy is much slower here. So I'm going to dig deeper into the Queen of Swords because the energy changed. Did you feel the energy changing now? The energy totally changed. There could be someone around you, Taurus, that there's a situation that could be dropping away or moving away. So I'm going to go a little deeper into that energy too. Um, first of all, let's, let's look at, let's go deeper into this energy, Taurus, so we can get this out of the way. And then I want to see what more information we can find about this glorious experience here that's coming up for you. Because remember, we're looking at the next week or two. Right. So, you know, and it could go longer if you're if you're in a big situation, you know, for some people, this is a smaller situation that's happening over a couple week period of time. For others of you, you could be making huge life changes. And if you're in a huge life change, then this situation could take longer for you because it everything is, is different and we're all resonating different with it. We're all fitting differently in with this information. So it's kind of up to you here. But let's go into this Eight of Cups and this Queen of Swords. I feel like they're connected. And I feel like they're somewhat separate from these other energies here. So I'm going to take these other energies and move them to the side. And I'm going to move these over here. And let's see what we can get out of this. Seven of Wands. The Star. So an Aquarius energy. It could be an Aquarius here around you, or you could be taking on the energy of Aquarius. Three of Wands. This Knight of Swords really tried to come out. I know you can't see that card, but I just want to get one more here. There we go. The Moon. King of Wands flipped over as well. All right, so. I feel like this person could be another person. I really do. I feel like this person could be another person. If it's, you're going to know if this is another person or if it's you. I'm going to describe this as a person, and then you can decide if you're going to lay that energy over the top of you or if it fits over the top of somebody else. But it looks like there's a situation that's just falling away here. Um, Seven of Wands is an energy of self-advocacy, being able to really speak what's on your mind, but not only speak what's on your mind, it's an energy of understanding your value, understanding that you're a different person and you're in a different situation and that you may have different ideas and th different thoughts and different passions in life and that you are welcome to those, that those are your right to have, that that is your right as a, as a human um, to have your own dreams and desires and your own interests and your own ways of ways of taking action in the world. Um, and with the seven of wands, it is a self promotion energy It's self. It's a self promotion energy. Sometimes it can be a self defense energy as well. Um, it is an energy of, of, um, propelling change forward. It's a seven energy. And when you're in the seven of wands energy, it does help you to make yourself farther on your way. It's like the five energies come in and they, 
initiate change. They can be very uncomfortable and painful, the five energies, but they really propel you or they, they create a situation that forces you to change. And then the seven energy comes along and kind of nudges you forward. It's, it's kind of like when you're on a swing and someone's pushing you on the swing um, and you, and you get going and you're going back and forth on the swing and you start to feel the, the, the energy go out of the swing. So you start to feel like you're not swinging as high as you used to. And someone comes up behind you and pushes you. And so you get that energy back again. It's just, it's, it keeps you going. That's what the seven of, of wands energy does. Um, and so whatever's going on here, it feels like you have a situation that you've had to really kind of clarify um, to yourself of who you are, that you're separate. Um, you're a separate person and you have separate interests and, and passions in life. And that um, as you've gained strength in this knowledge and this knowing, it's really helped you to, um, it, it's helped keep your energy from going out into other people's energies. It's helped create we're not just talking about boundaries here in, in creating walls around people. We're talking about creating this strength of self so that your energy is much happier just to be with you, right? The energy, your aura, it's happiest with you. It doesn't really want to go into anyone else's energy and it doesn't really want anyone else's energy to come into yours, right? This is what I'm showing. This is why it's fun to use different decks because there's an energetic bubble around, around you. And this energy prefers you. It prefers you because you're so strong. You're vibrant. You're really connected in with who you are. And you know the value of self. And this energy around you prefers that. And because it prefers that, it hugs to you. And it doesn't really allow anybody else's energy to come into yours because it wants to keep your energy as beautiful as it is right now. And your energy doesn't want to go into anyone else's energy because it doesn't like anyone else's energy. It prefers its own energy. So this is what the strengthening of the self can do. It's what meditation can do. It's what's understanding about the different chakras and about um, what each of the energy centers do within us. Taking time to understand that. Taking time to know what's precious about yourself. And it's this understanding of the preciousness of self that can push you farther into your journey um, of accomplishment in a way. We have the star energy here too. This is an Aquarius energy. This is really rising up into who you are and, and allowing yourself to connect in with your destiny and feeling the energy of that, feeling the energy of that coming into your soul and into your heart center and into your mind. Feeling the electricity of transparency and truth and eccentricity and your own freak flag, whatever that is, freak flag or kite. If you want to say, I'm going to fly my own kite and it's going to look exactly how I wish it to look and it's going to fly how I wish it to fly and it's going to reach up as high as I wish it to. You're not going to tell me how high my kite is going to reach. And you're not going to tell me what kind of wind I need to fly it in and what kind of landscape I need to be in, right? It's like grabbing your destiny and saying, because it's mixed with the seven of wands. This is mine. And I claim this now. This is like a, this is this nine of pentacles energy is what we're feeling here. This is, this is the energy that's helping you move out of this. It's helping you move out of um, uh, this painful place that you've been in. And I, I really think that you're feeling optimistic here, that you're feeling optimistic about where you're going. You're starting to see changes begin to come into your, your circle, right? You're starting to see changes in your world coming into your circle. And you feel excited about that. You feel, you anticipate the future. Instead of worrying about the future, you're anticipating the future. Different energy, different energy. 
Now this card is sort of connecting in with this and the colors are sort of connecting in. So if there is a person around you um, who is more of an air sign person, would be a Libra, Aquarius, or Gemini, um, this person who is around you is in a, is going to be in a communi in a communication phase. So this person is communicating. This person is bringing forward messages. Um, this person has something to express. And they're in a very, when you have the Queen of Swords energy with the Knight of Swords as the, as their movement method, as their movement method, um, this is someone who is very expressive. This is someone who is in a very protective and defensive and even um, offensive, like instead of defensive, offensive energy. And there's something that there's an expression about. Now, I, I'm not sensing that this person is being um, mean or being nasty or being unfair because the Queen of Swords is usually quite fair. It's just that there's something to say. There's something that has been on her mind. And it does feel like the winds of change are here. So this person is going through some sort of maybe even a purging, a purging of energies, a purging of ideas and thought forms, um, uh, um, looking out into the future and, and feeling drawn to something or feeling connected to something that is in the future or in the horizon. Uh, and there's something that this person is, is expressing or is, is saying, um, because you have the Queen of Swords here with the Knight of Swords. So this person is going to be going forward in their environment, whether that's towards you. I'm not necessarily sure if that's towards you. Could be towards you. And if this is you and the Queen of Swords, you will know if this is you or not. Um, but I feel like this person is moving forward in their life, moving forward in their life in a way that might be unseen, maybe even to the Queen of Swords. Um, and probably to you, Taurus, if, if you're not this Queen of Swords, this is something that you're not seeing. This is something that you're not understanding or that you have questions about, right? You have questions about this because there's something here that is somewhat of a mystery with the Queen of Swords. And the Queen of Swords is moving forward at a very rapid, urgent pace. So there's something here that the Queen of Swords is really focused on and is wanting to, um, you know, to get going on. There's a, there's an energy of, of getting going, almost like the Knight of Wands energy, but this is has this is a sharper energy. It's a sharper energy. There's something here that's really pulling at the Queen of Swords. There's probably something here that he or she is wanting to protect or defend, or is is wanting to save for other people. Um, the Queen of Swords thinks differently, thinks strangely. Um, but, but usually there's something here that's bigger than the self with the, with the sword energy. This is something that's bigger than the self that is wanting to be expressed. And sometimes it can be humanitarian. Sometimes it can be, um, in a, in a, in a rescuing energy where this Queen of Swords has been through quite a lot in her life. And she understands when people feel pain. She understands when people are displaced, um, from their homes or from their income or, or, um, when, when there is something that is having some sort of a challenge, whether it's a person or whether it's a, a part of the world or whether it's a, it's a planet in some way, when there's something that is being unfairly challenged, the Queen of Swords will see that immediately. It's like she's tuned into that. It's like these winds and this environment and, and the bird and the clouds and, and the water really can pull her to whatever and wherever there is someone or something that needs help. The Queen of Swords usually is quite connected and, and she's usually taking action or saying something in that way, whether it's for herself and protection of herself, for her children, for different people around her or for a, uh, an area on the planet or people, a certain tribe or certain culture. Um, the, this is a, the Queen of Swords is usually a big thinker um, who in, in some way or another connects in with people who are needing to be needing a voice, right? They, they need a voice and she can certainly be their voice. So she is moving forward now in something. And I feel like this is maybe somewhat of a mystery to you, Taurus, or if you're this person, you are doing this and you are a mystery to the people who are around you a mystery to the people who are around you. So that's the eight of cups with the, with the queen of swords. Now, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's look at this very um, inspiring and passionate um, 
situation that you're in here, Taurus, and see if we can get more out of this information, see what we can do. We can dig in here a little way, a little longer and see what we can find here. Well, I'm interested in this Two of Cups. So let's look at this, th these two energies. The Two of Cups and the Six of Cups is what's drawing me the most. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go into the Two of Cups now. Just want one energy here. Two of Cups energy. Two of Cups energy now. Tell me more about the Two of Cups. Five of Wands. Knight of Cups. The Tower. First of all, I want to show you the tower energy, just because it's a little harder to see. Well, it does feel like there's something here that's on the table, something here that's on the table, something that is, a, is an emotional offer. So this could be a love offer. This could be um, something that you're doing now, Taurus, that you feel very much in love with. So it could be work that you're doing that you're inspired with, that you um that you, you're in this energy of compassion and kindness and a willingness to step into this. It could be something that you're saying or something that's being said to you because I felt this tugging in my throat chakra there and um, you might hear me cough. That's from there's something here that you could be saying or something that someone could be saying to you um, that, that inspires you, that warms your heart, um, that's that's said in an energy of love and compassion. Um, there is the five of wands here with the tower here on either side of this. So um it could be that there is chaos around you here. Um, there could be some competition here. The fool energy comes over the top of the five of wands and over the top of the, of the knight of cups. So you could be having, you could be in a, <coughs> there we go. You could be in a situation now where you could be having, It's like somebody's taking my throat chakra and is messing with it now. So what that tells me is that there could be, you could be getting mixed mixed signals or there could be competition. You could be having messages coming from multiple places, uh, but but you're you're trying to figure out now how to move forward with this compassion energy, how to move forward with this love energy, to step into it, to relax into it, there's something going on around that's big, that's very big here. It's a very intense situation. We also have the lovers here. This could be a Gemini energy. Um, so we're going to dig deeper now into this Two of Cups. What time is it? <sighs> Don't get mad at me that I looked at the time because I really have to ma manage my time because I will lose myself in the reading and um, I have to manage my time. And if I de deplete myself doing one general reading, um, it's going to mess up the rest of my day. So, so again, oh, I'm in the Queen of Swords. Let me just be the Queen of Swords. <laughs> I'm Aquarius. So you just saw my Queen of Swords. Don't get mad at me that I looked at the time because I need to monitor my work as well. Queen of Swords. That's interesting that I'm in this Queen of Swords. Why am I in the Queen of Swords energy? Have you ever heard me do that before, Taurus? With the time... I don't think so. <sighs> There's a Queen of Swords energy here. Why?
why is this five of wands here? Why is this five of wands here? Ace of cups. There is new inspiration here, isn't it? Ace of cups, two of cups, knight of cups. There's new love here. There's the love situation or something here that you're wanting to treasure, that you're wanting to build, that helps you feel alive and well and, and, and in love with something, in love with the world, in love with yourself, in love with the situation, whatever it is. It's kind of awe-inspiring here with this ace of cups. Now, there is a situation, this Ace of Cups has had some blockage around it, has had some sort of stopping point around it. And it could have been, it could be that it's in the initial stages here. Tell me more about the Five of Wands. Tell me more about the Five of Wands. This is investigation, you guys, right here. Strength. It could be that this energy, this energy of love here has really had to overcome something to move into this new beginning. This, this knight of, of cups might have had to really overcome something to move into the new beginning, might have had to gentle its energy, might have had to change its energy, um, might have had to learn how to soften the energy. Something around this, this Knight of Cups needed to be gentled and softened because there was some sort of a blockage here, some sort of competition, or there, there was something that didn't work or hasn't worked before. Um, we'll go into the Knight of Cups and see what the Knight of Cups has to say, but there is Ace of Cups here. There is love here. And the fool energy is here as well. Let's see what the, and we have the lover's energy here. Let's see what the Knight of Cups has to say. What does the Knight of Cups have to say? What does the Knight of Cups have to say? Ten of Swords. It's been hard. It's been difficult. It's been lonely. Seven of Cups. Not sure what to do. Not sure what option's best. The past has been difficult. There's been a lot of pain. There's been a lot of confusion. It's been, it's, it's been a long journey. It's been a long, cold journey. This is what the Knight of Cups is saying, the energy of love. Um, there's been a lot of different opportunities here in life. It's really hard to see what these opportunities will bring. It's hard to know. This Knight of Cups might be worried about the future, might be insecure about taking risks. Here's a fool energy. Maybe this Knight of Cups has not wanted to open up and take a risk with the fool. See how the Ten of Swords and the Seven of Cups are over the top of the Knight of Swords, and then they're over the top of the world energy. So this Knight of Swords energy, I mean, this Knight of, Knight of Cups energy, this person, if this is a person, this person might have been through a real difficult life before this happened, real difficult situations. And because of that difficulty, because of that emptiness in life, because of that continual strife and continual tragedy, um, it's really hard for this Knight of Cups now to make a decision on, on what to do and where to, where to go. Because it's like this Knight of Cups is wanting to have a, a sense of security about the choices that he or she makes. But really, when we go through life, that's not really something. I know we can do readings and we can do tarot readings and we can get into the energies, but, but energies change almost immediately. Nothing ever stays the same. So tomorrow I could do this reading. And I could come out a little bit differently, right? The, the, the Knight of Cups is almost wanting some kind of sure thing because the Knight of Cups has been beaten up has been beaten up and there's there's been a lot of difficulty in this person's life. And it seems like this Knight of Cups might be hesitating or might have hesitated to start something, to start something new. It's hard to go into the full energy. It really is difficult to go into the full energy, especially when you've come out of the Ten of Swords. It's hard. You want to get stabbed again? Right? Like it's, it's difficult. So this person or this energy needs to be understood that this is something that is difficult for the Knight of Cups. 
Okay, let me clean this up just a little bit. I'm going to leave this Ace of Cups in there. Let's look at the, the Fool energy. Tell me more about the Fool energy. Tell me more about the Fool energy. High Priestess. Nine of Swords. So there, there is someone here. This could be you, Taurus, or this could be the other person who is quite intuitive, very intuitive, um, could be psychic, could um, have dreams and visions, um, could be a kind of a mystery um, person, whether this is you or someone else, um, very much in tune with herself or himself, um, very much connected to the divine energy, a more quiet energy, a silent energy, kind of a mystery here, a mysterious type of person, but a lot of but but the high priestess can be sometimes surprising in what the high priestess can do. She does it quietly. She does it in her own way. She works in co-creation with spirit. And she really can make things happen in her own way that are sort of mysterious. Um, this person has had a lot of stress, has had a lot of anxiety, has had a lot of worry. See how we have the Nine of Swords and before we had the Ten of Swords? So this could be the Knight of Cups person here. This Two of Cups. We do have the lover's energy here as well. So let's go into the lover's energy and see what we can find in the lover's energy. And there has been some kind of chaos or some sort of surprise ending or surprise, something big and serious here happened um, to, this, to this person or to this partnership. So let's look at the lover's energy. Lover's energy. Four of pentacles. Two of swords. Nine of Cups. So there's a partnership here. There's an intense energy between the masculine and feminine. Now this lover's energy is over the top of the Knight of Cups. So this Knight of Cups could be the person who's around you. And it looks like there's been some sort of... There, there just need it needs to be some clarity or this person is just looking for clarity. Um, between holding on to what's safe and secure, holding on to the this, this sanctity and the sanctuary and the stability of life, um, but also then moving forward into something that's quite joyous and beautiful. Um, so this person is really kind of um, on the fence or has been on the fence about what is, you know, if this person has been through tragedy, if this person has been through deep hardship, this Four of Pentacles could be quite significant to this person because the Four of Pentacles is an energy of stability and safety. And if somebody has gone through a journey of not um, feeling stability and safety, when they find it, it could be quite a treasure to them. And when something else is offered, something else that's joyous, that's happy, that could bring enjoyment and fun and relaxation and and happiness into life. There's something here that this person must give up in order to reach that. And what they must give up is their safety and security because they'd be stepping out into a new journey, into a pathway. And there's as much as we want to know what's happening in our future, our spiritual teams really don't let us know too much, do they? Because we're here to experience. We're here to discover. And if those discoveries are made for us, and if the experiences are created for us and then we just walk into them. It's, it's again, it's, it's like, I mean, do we want to be living in a video game or do we want to have our own experience that we co-create and we have the raw emotions of it, right? And when we die and we can, at our deathbed, we can look back and say, I really lived a powerful life. I really lived a full, a full life for myself, right? And so this person is, is trying to figure out trying to see the truth that's around them with the Two of Swords. Let me go into the Two of Swords just a little bit here. Four of Wands, stability, looking for stability. This is somebody that really needs this four energy, which is stability, security, happiness. It might be interesting to know what this person's Nine of Cups is. This person, if they have been through hardship, they may not like to have a whole lot of drama. They may not like to have chaos in their life. 
they may not like to be financially in poverty. Right? They might be looking for something that is forward moving and more abundant as the days go on. So if there's anything here in, in this pathway or in this vision or in this seven of cups, I think I put it back, that is insecure for them or is showing signs of devastation or so, showing signs of trauma, they may, if they're looking for this four of wands, this happiness, this healthiness, this comfort in life, um, trust in something, being able to trust in something, um, you know, it, it might it, it might be interesting here. There is a tower here. So there's, and there's a five of wands. So there's something here that could be making this person nervous about what this nine of cups is. But I see that there's a partnership here. So I, I think that this is in the works. That's what I'm saying. Like this is in the works. I'm going into the energy I'm going into the energy of this Knight of Cups. That's what I'm going into the energy of. So um, I'm going into the backstory. So don't let it derail you about what the what the summary is. Don't let it derail you. But I did go into the energy. And that's what happens when I dig deeper. Um, it, it brings up information, right? So I'm going to put all these cards back. Make sure they're in the upright, for goodness sakes. Sometimes the reversal cards are better than the uprights, but usually, uh, usually not. If I'm going to be honest about you, sometimes they are like the eight of swords in reverse. Beautiful. The three of swords in reverse. Beautiful. Right. But not all the time. Are they? Oh, I left the knight of cups there and I put the six of wands back. No, the six of wands is here. All right. That goes back. So there's that two of cups. So it does look like there's some sort of a partnership here, right? And it does look like it's happening. One more energy over the top of this two of cups. It does look like it's happening. The fool. It looks like there's something new here. Something new, something, something new, something new coming in. Something that could be sort of wobbly, sort of, you know, not sure, but, but there's a willingness to surrender into this. So something new coming in here with the two of cups. All right, let's look at the Six of Cups energy. Looking at the Six of Cups. I know this reading is going long, but let's let's get to the end of it here. I want to get to the end of it. This is a beautiful reading. We have the Nine of Swords and the Seven of Wands. So there's something here. Page of Wands. There's something here that um, you could have been worried about and you could have really had to rebuild yourself from this situation. You could have been worried about this, anxious about this, feeling hopeless about it. And in this hopelessness, in this in this feeling of aloneness, you, you could have had to recover from that and build this sense of empowerment within you. And now you have this new energy, this new youthfulness, um, new passion, new excitement about what this healing is or what this friendship is or what this deep rootedness is, whether it's with another person or whether it's really um, instilling within yourself. There is some sort of a an alignment happening here with, within your rootedness, within your heart center that is deep, deep in your bones. And it does bring a, an energy of healing and revitalization, an energy of harmony um, and balance into your life again. And it feels good. It feels warm and fuzzy, um, like a soft pillow. Um, this is also very in, in, um, inspiring and exciting, and it really fills you with new energy again. It puts a bounce in your step now as you walk forward. It puts a bounce in your step. But to get to this place, you really had to rebuild yourself from something here. Um, with the Nine of Swords and the Seven of Wands. Let's look at the Six of Wands really quickly, too, before we go. Six of Wands. The Tower. Four of Wands. So there was something here that you had to overcome. Something here that you had to overcome. And now you have this new formality or this new work or something new here that's brought you a sense of comfort, a sense of safety, could be a new relationship, a marriage even, an engagement, 
Um, but there has been this surprise, this chaos around it. And it looks like you're ste stepping forward now into a new, into a new time or into a new experience that will bring comfort, comfort, will bring a sense of security, a sense of togetherness, even with the four of wands. Beautiful with the six of wands. All right, my friends, I am going to move into the extended and in the extended, I'm going to dig deeper into this partnership that we have here. I'm going to look at intentions. I'm going to look at intentions. I'm going to take this out uh, maybe a month or so into the future, maybe a month and a half into the future, looking at maybe the middle or the end of May. Um, and we'll see what is happening here with this two of cups and the six of cups. And then we'll get, we're going to go into intentions and dig down into um, the heart. The heart in, is often different than what the intentions are. Um, sometimes we can feel a certain way, but we certainly are not going to take action, right? So, so in the extended, I'm going to dig more into intention, actions that are going to be taken, um, what will come of this, not only in an emotional way, but what will come of this in a real action, action sense kind of way. So that's what I'm going to dig into in the extended reading. All right, Taurus, this has been fun. Um, I hope it's helped you. I hope you like the cards. I really like them. Um, it's a beautiful deck. And um, if you if you would like to go to the extended, the link is in the comment section or in the information section be below the video. All right, beautiful friends. Thank you very much. I will see you back on YouTube in another week or so with another update for Taurus. All right. Thank you.